Hey everybody, Dr. LeGrand here. And today I am excited to share with you the thing that I have learned, the new discovery that I've learned about dopamine after doing over 11,000 different lab tests on patients uh, that struggle with lack of motivation, drive, focus, or have ADHD. So if that's you, you definitely are going to want to stick around to really learn this new discovery of things that I've learned. And so right from the very beginning, when it comes to dopamine and when we test for it, uh, the interesting fact that I have noticed is that when people have things like ADHD, they assume that everybody just has low dopamine. But from my new discovery, I did not find that as the case. I do find that about close to about almost half do. In fact, about uh, when people were low in dopamine that we tested over the years, we found that 48% were low in dopamine. So it's a big number and it definitely can impact your motivation and drive. But there is other factors that I have discovered that cause the dopamine to be low, but also cause all these different symptoms you're experiencing, whether you have ADHD, focus, memory issues, uh, mental burnout. That's you. Let me know in the chat. Because when we look at other things that can make things worse, there's also the opposite that I noticed. And the opposite is when dopamine was spiked. And why does this happen? Typically, when I would see this happen is when I would meet with somebody, um, and especially if they were on student medication, so like Adderall or Ritalin, something that specifically targets dopamine to help improve dopamine. Now, the problem is if you already have high dopamine levels to begin with, and then you add a medication to that, that is not going to be a good situation to be in. It's just not. And the reason being, because you're going to feel more agitated, irritated, uh, and maybe you experience that, or you're getting heart palpitations while you're on the medication. So we have found like when I would test this, it's not huge, but about 10% of the people that we tested uh, had high levels of dopamine. It's still a good portion. And it's something to not overlook. It can be a big concern to your health. And so it's something that we definitely want to test. And it can be the culprit of why you can't focus very well because you don't want to be high or low. You want to be in the nice middle with your dopamine levels. Okay. Another thing to also really look at is, like I was saying before, what is contributing to the fact that dopamine is low to begin with? And there's multiple reasons that this can be. Two reasons. Uh, well, there's multiple, but let me talk about the, like, the first two um, that are really big. One, this excitatory neurotransmitter known as phenylethylamine right here is also responsible for helping with motivation, focus, and drive. Okay. So, and what we have found over the years that people are, who are low on this, just like this patient, 90%, 90% were low. So if you're watching this, there's a very high likely chance that you're also low in this. And this can be the culprit to your low energy situation and not necessarily dopamine. Why else this is also important is because this excitatory neurotransmitter, like I said, helps with motivation, drive, and focus. But so the other thing is also looking at phenylalanine, which is an amino acid that helps make tyrosine and then from tyrosine to L-DOPA and then L-DOPA to dopamine. So we also found that tyrosine in itself was, with all the people that we've tested, it was 52% were low on this. And that's what helps make dopamine. So a stimulant, if you want to kind of think about a stimulant, like especially like dopamine itself, I like to look at it as like, uh, think about it as a, um, come on, as a faucet. It's a terrible looking faucet, but you guys get the idea. And when you turn on the faucet, it's supposed to be the lever. That's think about it as like a stimulant. It's to allow more dopamine to come out to be able to go throughout our system so that we can have more. That's what a stimulant does. But it doesn't make it. So what happens when you start to run out when it's too much? When too much is worn out and these things are low. You got to increase your dosages on your medication, but it still is not enough. Let me know in the chat if you struggle with that, where you have increased your dosages of medication and it's still not enough. 
That's because the stimulant doesn't make the dopamine. These things like tyrosine, phenylalanine, philothalamine, L-dopa, those things do. And other different micronutrients, what I'm going to get, get into here in just a second. And that's what needs to be addressed. Not necessarily a stimulant. Stimulant can, you know, help kind of like just pull the lever and, 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 and increase it, but doesn't make it. So we need to look at the things that are the things that make dopamine and cause the deficiency. And that's what we have found from our testing. Another thing here too is norepinephrine and epinephrine are really important when it comes to dopamine because they are the breakdown dopamine, but it helps manage our stress and it can definitely impact focus, motivation, and drive. And these are things I've actually seen that are a bigger issue than dopamine. For example, norepinephrine, we found that 60% of the people that we tested were low in norepinephrine levels. Whereas epinephrine, it's actually 98%. Very high. So most people with ADHD that we've tested uh, or had issues with motivation, focus, not necessarily had the ADHD diagnosis, but had those issues, were low on these two things. And so it's really important for us to address that and target these areas that are not being addressed. Now, another thing that also needs to, um, to be looked at, if you look right here, so I'm bringing this, this, uh, this pathway. So this is the dopamine pathway. So looking right here, these things right here is what we call as cofactors. Okay. They're the things that help make dopamine. It's like thinking about it like baking a cake. You need ingredients. If those ingredients aren't there and they're low, they're deficient, you're not able to produce enough dopamine. Okay. It's all important. So what we found is for example, vitamin B6, which is really important for making dopamine because, and also phenylethylamine. I told you that's also really important. So P5P is the activated form of vitamin B6 and it's responsible for every step of the process for helping making dopamine. And 60% of the people that we've tested were low in vitamin B6. So there's a high chance that that could be you. Uh, and that needs to be addressed for sure. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to be consistently producing enough dopamine, uh, and that might be the culprit to your issue. Another one that's also important in this process, cofactor, is iron. So you see it right there. Iron is vital, but the other thing that's also important about bile, other than helping it making dopamine, uh, it also carries blood and oxygen and nutrients to the brain. So if you're low in iron levels, that can be a culprit of why you might be mentally drained and, and burnt out. So that that's also in itself right there. So it's not as big, but like, I mean, it's still 18% of the people we've tested were low in iron. And so definitely one to not ignore and to look at to see, okay, is this an issue and contributing to my symptoms I'm experiencing? Some other really big ones too is vitamin B3. So vitamin B3 is responsible for, remember when I was telling you um, about how dopamine can, about 10% can be, have dopamine levels being elevated. And sometimes because vitamin B3 levels are low, because vitamin B3 helps break down dopamine and utilize it, the body. So definitely that could be the culprit. And we, when we were testing this, we found about, about roughly about 30% of people are low in vitamin B3. Now, another really big one is zinc. Zinc is really responsible for both taking from phenylalanine to tyrosine and also from tyrosine to L-DOPA. So a lot of times we need to look at zinc levels because it also helps build modulate not only dopamine, but other different neurotransmitters as well. And with this one, we found about 29% of the people that we tested were low in zinc, just like this individual right here. Okay. Another really big one is vitamin D. So going back here, vitamin D is responsible also for helping from, um, especially the process from tyrosine to L-DOPA, um, but also it can impact energy, your immune system, all sorts of things. And when we test this, we found that the people that were chronically low in vitamin D, about 29% of the people were chronically low. Now, roughly... Usually across the board, you can look at this in, in, in studies uh, and research, about 50% of the population in general tend to be 
somewhat deficient in vitamin D. But chronically, uh, that we saw in our lab testing about 29%. It's big, right? And it's something that needs to be addressed. And it's very common with people that suffer with cognitive function, memory, focus, motivation, or ADHD symptoms. Okay. And then the another one that needs cannot be overlooked is cortisol can directly impact dopamine. And because of that, it's something that I usually like to look at and notice that the, this one is a huge problem, especially adults that suffer with cognitive output, memory and focus and ADHD and stuff like that. So just like this patient in here, 92% that we've tested tend to have insufficient amount of cortisol. Cortisol is what gives us energy. Uh, it helps us to have focus and consistency throughout the day. So when it's low, it's very hard to function. You're just completely burnt out. Right now, another one that also look to not overlook is also sometimes cortisol levels can spike and that can also impact focus and motivation and drive too. And that's something to not also overlook. And what we found here is about 22% of the people that we've tested uh, tend to have higher levels of cortisol. So it definitely needs to be addressed. Uh, sometimes we even see it where it will really spike uh, and can cause a lot of havoc, not only for your focus and energy and stress levels, but also your sleep. So it's, and sleep definitely impacts um, your focus, motivation, you know, just to be able to function throughout the day, right? So these are the things that definitely that we have discovered and have noticed over the years when we've done these lab testing. But in order to really help uh, the patients that we've helped is because we've been able to do these investigative lab work, high functional lab testing to identify the root causes and the issues. And so if you would like me to order these labs test for you to find the root causes to your own dopamine problem, or your motivation or focus issues, then, you know, go ahead and just, there's a link in the description where you can book uh, an HD focused diagnostic assessment with me. Uh, it's a 45 minute one-on-one -on -one assessment where I will dive into your medical history, understand the ins and outs of your challenges, but more importantly, create a roadmap of what lab testing that we need to implement, what action plan we need to put together uh, in order to help you out. So if you want my help on that, you go uh, click on the link in the description below and it's just right there. Thank you guys so much for attending and I will see you guys in the next live stream. Thanks.